Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm now going to be answering question number two from the International A Level at Excel um, Pure Mathematics P1 paper for June 2021. Um, this is question two here. It says, in this question, you must show all stages of your working. Now, this is in bold type. Solutions relying on calculator technology are not acceptable. Now, many students ignore these kind of like, you know, these phrases in, in the paper. They're very, very important. I'll explain why as we go through the question. And you know, a lot of students are going to lose marks in this type of question because of not following these kind of instructions or warnings. Now, f of x equals ax squared plus 6a plus 8x squared minus a squared x, where a is a positive constant. Given that f minus 1 equals 32, a part 1 asks us to show that the only possible value for a is 3. Okay, so first we have to basically um, substitute inside this function. f minus 1 equals 32 means you put minus 1 in place of the x inside this function, then what will come out is 32. So if f minus 1 is equal to 32, what that means is you replace the x with minus 1. So you have a times minus 1 cubed, that's ax cubed, plus, and you have 6a plus 8 times minus 1 squared, minus a squared times minus 1. And when you do that, what should come out is 32. So we set up like a little equation using that, and now we can um, solve this equation for a. So when you cube a negative number, it stays negative. Of course, minus 1 cubed is negative 1, so you have negative a. Then you square a negative number, it becomes positive, so minus 1 squared is just 1, so that's plus 6a plus 8. And you have minus a squared times minus 1. Multiply them together, you get positive a squared equals 32. Now we have a quadratic equation in a. So you have a squared and a terms and constant terms. So to solve a quadratic equation, we should really equate it to 0 if we're going to try to factorize it. So let's take the a squared and then the a terms. You're going to have plus 5a. And then the constant terms, 8 minus 32 is negative 24 equals 0. So we have a quadratic equation in A. Now, in order to solve this quadratic equation, we need to factorize this, this side of the equation. So we're going to... This is an easy type of factorizing where it splits into two brackets. Now, what you shouldn't do is use your calculator um, equation feature and find the values of a and just write the next sentence a equals this a equals that that is what they are referring to in this part of the question here okay solutions relying on calculator technology are not acceptable you must show all stages of your working so that's what they're referring to in these statements here so you don't just find your answer um, by just using your calculator um, you know equation button uh, or function so what you must what you want you must do is factorize so we've got to find two numbers that multiply this is an easy one where it's just one a squared it's just the a the square term is just it got a coefficient of one so you know for sure it's going to be a and a a times a is a squared and we have two numbers that multiply together okay these two numbers when you multiply them together are going to give you negative 24 and when you add these two, two numbers together you're going to get plus 5a Okay, so it's going to be two numbers. When you multiply them together, you get negative 24. When you add them together, you get plus 5. Well, of course, it's five. It's going to be 8 times 3 is 24. And 8 minus 3 is going to be have, you're going to have an 8 and a negative 3. If you multiply them together, you get negative 24. You add them, you get plus 5. So it's a plus 8 times a minus 3. And that's factorized. And now we can say either a plus 8 equals 0. Or we can say a minus 3 equals 0. So a is either equal to negative 8 or a is equal to 3. Now the question says show that the only possible value for a is 3. So we've got that. That's our answer. But we have to, it's always better to mention something here. The fact they told us a is a positive constant. Okay, so we can say as a must be positive, must be positive. We can say, therefore, 
a cannot be negative 8 so a is equal to 3 okay so there's the answer to that question um, and it's better to state that because of the fact that it says show that the only possible value for a is 3 so you just explain why you didn't accept this value of a equals negative 8 so that's part a done so very important part a a part one done so that what's very important here is to be able to um, show that you factorize it to solve it if you just go straight from there to there you're liable to lose marks because of this statement at the top of the page right now two part um, a part two okay it says u a equals three or using a equals three solve the equation f of x equals zero so this is f of x now we want to solve the equation f of x equals zero using a equals three so i'm going to replace the a with three so i'll have three x cubed and this is six times three which is 18 18 plus 8 is 26 plus 26 x squared uh, minus 3 squared is 9, so that's going to be minus 9x equals 0. So that's f of x equals 0 when you've used a equals 3. So now we're going to solve this equation. This is a cubic equation. And again, you could use your calculator, um, you know, the function for the, 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 um, the uh, calculator um, equations function in and you can find the answer to this you can choose this as a polynomial of degree three put in the value of a is three b is 26 c is minus nine and d is zero um because it's plus zero here and then you can uh, it will tell you the answer straight away you can have x equals x equals x you'll have the answers directly however you can't do that in this question unless you want to lose marks because the question states very clearly in the beginning that you can, you do not rely on calculator technology to answer this you have to show how you have got those answers by factorizing so this is the type of cubic that you would face in p1 where you have uh, x in each of the terms so you can take out x as a factor so you have x and you have 3x squared plus 26x minus 9 equals 0 so we can see that one of our solutions is going to be x equals 0 and the other solutions will be found when we factorize this quadratic so I'm going to factorize this quadratic here now to factorize a quadratic um, such as this I'm going to use what's what we call the grid or the window method all right so I'll make a little grid here okay so the reason why I'm not doing this in the same way as what's um, what I did above okay just put the two buckets straight away you could actually try to do that and that's fine it would work if you do some guessing checking but I like to um, organize it in this way where I put the squared term on the top left and the constant term on the bottom right and I multiply them together so the product is negative 27 x squared so basically these two their product will be the same as these two so I have to find two numbers that go here and here and their product must be the same as the product of these two which is minus 27 x squared however their sum must be the same as this x term which is positive 26 so it's not going to always be the same two numbers so think of two numbers when you multiply them you get negative 27 x squared and when you add them you get plus 26 well of course I think that must be um, 27 x and negative x if I add them I get 26 x and if I multiply them I get negative 27 x squared so if I put 27 x and negative x in these two places I will have the right combination of numbers that give me this as a sum and this same thing as these two as a product now I can take out the common factor from these two terms and write it over here which is x and that's now the basis for the rest of the answer so x times something here gives me 3x squared well that's 3x and x times something here gives me minus x that's a minus 1 and then I can say this times 3x gives me 27x that's 9 okay positive 9 so now I have factorized it okay this is factorized so I could, I've got my x from before and then this will split now into two brackets I have 3x minus 1 times x plus 9 now that's fully factorized and I can say the three factors I can uh, the three solutions are x equals 0 or 3x minus 1 equals 0 or x plus 9 equals 0 because when you have three things multiplied together three factors multiplied together to give you 0 one of them has to be 0 so either x is 0 or 3x minus 1 is 0 or x plus 9 is 0 all of those will give us uh, 0 if we 
put those values back in here. So this, this gives us x equals minus a third, sorry, x equals a third. You add one to both sides and divide by three. And x equals negative nine. So there we have the three solutions to this equation, um, f of x equals zero when a equals three. And there we have the answer to this question. Let's make that more clear as a negative nine. There's the answer to question number one, part two. 1a part 2. Okay, um, and now I'm going to go on to the next question. Okay, so for the next part of the question, part b, question 2, part b, we have here, um, it says, hence find all real solutions of 3y plus 26y to the power of 2 thirds minus 9y to the power of a third. Now, this looks really complicated. However, there's a, a very important word here, which is hence. What hence means is use the answers to the previous part of the question to answer this question. That's what it means. Using what you just did, find all real solutions of. So you have to go back to what we did before. So what I'm going to do is, this is what we did before. We had this equation and we solved it. When f x equals 0, we found that x equals 0, x equals a third, and x equals minus 9. Okay, that's what we did. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to write down the equation that we solved, which is 3x cubed plus 26x squared minus 9x equals 0. And I'm going to compare the two equations, the one I have to solve now and the one I solved earlier. And we can see that there's a very clear connection between them. Okay, first of all, what you should notice is the coefficients of each of the terms are the same. They're both, they're all the same. This is minus 9 here, plus 26, and this is 3. And that's the first thing to notice. So that's one thing that you should have realized. The second thing, I know that this x squared is a square of x. And x cubed is a cube of x. Now I know that y to the power of 2 thirds is like y to the power of a third squared. So this term is the square of that term. And I know that um, y to the power of 1 is equal to y to the power of a third cubed. So this term is the cube of that term. So I can compare these. I can say let x equals y to the power of a third. All right? Let x be y to the power of a third. So then this equation will become, okay, you're going to have, you see, your y is going to be basically x cubed. So you can, you're going to have basically this equation here. You're going to have 3x cubed plus 26x squared minus 9x equals 0. Okay, if you, if you replace the y to the power of a third with x, okay, then this is the equation you get. All right? And we know the, the solutions to these equations already. We know that x equals 0, x equals a third, x equals minus 9. So we can say, therefore, x equals 0, x equals a third, and x equals negative 9. That's what we already found in the earlier part of the solution. We don't have to go and solve that again. However, we know that x is the same as y, um, as y to the power of a third. So what I can say, therefore, y to the power of a third equals zero, and y to the power of a third equals a third, and y to the power of a third equals negative nine. And from those, I can find my solutions. So I can say that means y equals, if I cube this, I cube that, that's going to be zero. And also y equals, if I cube this, I'll get y. If I cube 1 third, I get 1 over 27. And if I cube y to the power of 3rd, I get y. If I cube minus 9, minus 9 times minus 9 times minus 9 is negative, 729. So those are the solutions to this problem. Okay, so you just compare what you have been given to what you got before. You can see very clearly if I replace the y to the power of a third with x, then this becomes 26x squared, this becomes 3x cubed, then the solutions to this okay, are going to be uh, what we found earlier. So we can just replay, we can just equate y to the power of a third to each of those solutions and then find what y is. And then for part two, very similarly, okay, we have something again. You have three, we had three times x cubed and we had 26 times, sorry, x, 26 times x squared minus 9 times x equals 0. That was the solution, the thing we solved, and we had x equals 0 and a half 
no and a third sorry and a minus nine was our solutions now again we can see very clearly that there's a link between these two if i say let x be nine to the power of z then we can say um x squared is going to be if we square this you'll have nine to the power of z squared which gives you nine to the power of two z which is exactly what we get there that's nine to the power of two z so that's representing x squared and x cubed is going to be nine to the power of z cubed which is nine to the power of three z okay so we can see that the solutions to these are, as we know are zero a third and minus nine so therefore i can say let's have nine to the power of z can take the place of the x which is going to be zero and we can say nine to the power of z equals a third and we can say nine to the power of z equals minus nine so those are three um you know the three values for x that we get will be the three values for nine to the power of z all right so now we've got to find what z is now in this case there's no solution same in this case because and these exponential equations 9 to the power of z will never be zero there's no value of z that will make that zero it's undefined and 9 to the power of z will also never be negative because these exponential curves look like this all right so if this is like you know 9 to the power of x or 9 to the power of z if you want and here this never reaches zero and it never goes negative it will always be above zero so you can't get a value um minus 9 for 9 to the power of z nor can you get a value for zero it never reaches this okay however this will give us a solution now 9 to the power of z equals a third again we can solve this uh, we could use logarithms actually but p2 um, doesn't include logarithms uh, sorry p1 doesn't include logarithms although if you use it you'll still get the answer but you imagine we haven't got to that yet and we want to know how to solve this without using logarithms well it's pretty simple what we need to do is to make the bases the same so we have 9 and 3 okay forget that it's in the denominator for now it doesn't matter um, we can make them the same base as 3 to the power of something so this is in 3 squared to the power of z equals now 1 third is the same as 3 to the power of negative 1 so then we can multiply the bracket so 3 to the power of 2z equals 3 to the power of minus 1 so therefore we can say once the bases are the same then the powers must be the same so 2z equals minus 1 so z equals minus a half um that's right so there we have the only solution to z okay z equals minus one over two so there we have the answer to this question so this part b the word hence is very important and when you ever you see hence it's always a good idea to take what you did before and write it next to what you have to solve and you will see very clearly the links between them Okay, same in this question of hell. Here you say 3, you have 26, you have minus 9. And you notice that this term is the square of that term and this term is the cube of that term. Just like we have there. So we can call x 9 to the power of z. So the solutions for x are, will be the solutions for 9 to the power of z. And then you can work out what z is. So, um, yeah, so other questions that you might want to watch from this particular paper of June 2021 p1 you can find by clicking on the link that should appear somewhere in this area you can click on this link below it to, to give you questions to do with solving equations in general um and you know algebraic uh, quadratic equations and these type of equations you can click on this link uh, to subscribe to my channel and on the top of the page here there'll be a card taking to a different p1 paper you might want to watch please uh, look at the description of the video you'll find in the description links to other papers like p2 p3 p4 m1 s1 of the international a level at excel board and you'll also find um igcse uh, a link to an igcse um you know part of my uh, channel where i answer questions from the cambridge international exams as well from igcse uh, thank you for watching and i see you soon